Um, I know real estate's difficult. I know it's like every day people today, wow, like these, look at these people they are, they're making all this money and they're doing fantastic. And look at that commission that I'm paying. But, um, but I know it, I do it every day. You do it as well. It's, it's, it's not always easy, but why do you keep getting up every day? Why are you doing this? Like when you could be doing something else? This is for the first time ever. I've had a job where I really can set my schedule. There's there's parts of it that I wasn't expecting to really, really enjoy so much. And being able to set my schedule is a giant one. Um, and really being able to have tons of quality time with my kid because I know that if I plan my, if I work my plan, or plan my work and work my plan, I know that it's gonna be incredibly beneficial. Um, but my, my big like umbrella why is really, I mean, it's, I'm a single parent. So if I'm not on that phone or if I'm not showing houses, me and my kid are homeless, you know? <laughs> Welcome everyone. Uh, this is John Carroll with the Carroll Home Team, and this is Beyond the Sale Podcast. I'm so excited to bring today to you um, our buyer's agent, our rock star buyer's agent, Sarah. And she is um, with us now for a little less than a year, I think, just shy of a year. And Sarah, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, but I just want to start off just by just talking about the numbers, because we always just talk about numbers here. Uh, and, um, but 15 deals closed year to date on her way to a hundred K, um, net to her, uh, in her first deal and her, excuse me, her first year. Um, it's pretty incredible. And that's why I wanted to bring you on the podcast. Cause I just want to share the value to others and hopefully they can gain something from it. So I, um, so Sarah, so, um, tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, uh, how do you get started in real estate? That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, well, when you say it like that, it sounds really awesome. <laughs> I'm going to have to like listen to that over and over. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I grew up in central Florida, right outside of Orlando. Um, I went to college to be a teacher and eventually a social worker. Uh, I'm a fixer. So I <laughs> soon realized that that was not a career that I was ever going to be able to fix everybody. Um, so I got a job full-time working at a church, lived in Los Angeles for 10 years, uh, got married, had a baby out in Los Angeles, and then uh, four years ago, moved back to Florida with just my daughter um, and went back to teaching, and it was no longer a good fit. <laughs> um, I love people. I love I love children. I love family. I love helping and serving, uh, but it was not a career where that I was ever going to make enough money for myself. I was never going to be able to make enough money for my daughter as a single parent. So I decided to look into sales. Uh, I worked uh, in corporate sales for a big cell phone company and did pretty well pretty quickly. I think I just am nice in general, so that helped. <laughs> um and then about six months into doing sales, my brother-in-law was like, Sarah, you should really look into real estate. I think you'd be really good. And I was like, no way. Like, don't you have to be really smart? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just nice. I don't think that's going to be a good fit. Um, and then I kind of took a chance on myself. I was working full time and then in real estate school full time, like Saturday, Sundays, five five nights a week doing like four to five hours until like late into the night. And I, my goal was to be done with school within a month and a half and I did it. And so right at about a year ago, I got my license and I had no idea what I was going to do because real estate school teaches you how not to go to jail. It doesn't teach you how to be an agent, uh, which is important. I mean, not going to jail is a huge part, but, <laughs> um, and then I was really blessed in the way that my brother-in-law was already a part of the Carol team. And he introduced me to John and to Rachel. And uh, since then, it's just been kind of like a, a really crazy year in a really wonderful, wonderful way. I remember when you, you got started, uh, I think when we first talked with you, we were like, I think Andrew, your brother-in-law was mentioning like, you know, um, you know, you're interested in joining the team or you're interested in real estate in general. And you're, and I think we were looking for an ISA position mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the time, like an inside sales agent. Yeah. And I think we reached out to you and we're like, Hey, do you, we have this position open. Do you want it? And you're like, no. 
I, I want to be a realtor. Yeah, I was like, um, do I make as much money? Because if the answer is no, then just wait, and then I'll be a real estate agent. And I think that's cool, right? So I, and I think like ultimately, and I think of you, Sarah, it's all really about uh, helping. You understand like, hey, look, I first and foremost, I, I want to help people. I think that's to the core of who you are. But also, I think we worked on that too, is like, I realized that like, it's just not helping people in this, in the sake of, you know, for doing something just for them, not for me. Right. So it has to be a win-win relationship. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm a fixer. And so if all I need is a cause and I'm in, um, which is, which is a wonderful quality to have in the way that I look out at the world and say, okay, what, what am I doing to make it better? Um, but there really was like a visceral breakdown of you can still be incredibly helpful and empower a community. And at the same time, time still pay your bills on time like it doesn't poverty and being empowering aren't always synonymous and that was something that I never really understood until I started spending time with people that were doing those things and still were able to be successful financially um and it's still something that I have to like not struggle with but it's still something that I have to kind of bring back like okay is this going to put you closer to being a good parent is this going to put you closer to providing a stable future for your kid you know or you know those big things and if the answer is no then I really have to figure out how can I make it yes and still help? <laughs> yeah. And when we started off, I think we start off with like, why? Like, why are we doing this? And I remember like some of your mm -hmm. goals and I, Rachel shared this with me because we didn't have this direct conversation, but one of the big goals for you is one is to buy, get a house, right? And to buy a house for you and your daughter. But mm -hmm. the other one after that is to go on a trip to Europe with you and your daughter, which I thought was so mm -hmm. cool. It gives me shivers, like mm -hmm. shivers now just to think about <laughs> it. Uh, and um, so yeah, I mean, we do this. We work. We work for a living, and we have to. And we we want to help people, sure. But obviously, at the end of the day, we want we have to make money at it, and that's that's the way it goes. So, Sarah, I think you know, just because you're new in this and you're getting started, and you were so successful right from the jump, what did you find was the biggest challenge getting started um, from after taking the test to saying like, "Hey, I'm, I'm getting my first deal mm -hmm. closed," but after really feeling comfortable with the whole process? Yeah, good question. Um, because I joined a team so quickly, I know myself and I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And I was gonna be working in an area that I wasn't from. I was gonna be working in Vero and I'd only visited. I'd never lived here. I'd never spent time with people outside of my brother-in-law and his family. So I knew that I needed somebody that was already on the inside. And I also knew that this is something I've never done before. Um, so I needed, people to be like, here's what you do, here's point A, here's point B, here's how you get there. So um, joining the Carol team was um, incredibly important in my success early on, 100%. Um, super knowledge-based, uh, familial, super good at figuring out people's strengths and then helping them lean into them. And then where I know that I'm not good at. There's people on my team that are good at those things so they can help me lean in together. I think that's super duper important. Um, when I first started, even because I, I started, I think like mid October and then by, I think within two weeks of joining the team, I had already had a lead and then we had already put in an offer, which was like crazy. Cause I didn't even know what I was doing. I just knew I was supposed to be nice and like help these people from Boston. Um, I got really, really blessed that they bought a house site unseen. They bought it for like a ridiculous amount over asking. They waived the inspection. And then when they got here, they still wanted the house. Like it was, it was like a dream deal. <laughs> um, that is not the narrative of every single deal. Um, but once that first deal closed and I had, you know, money in the bank, I think the first things I did was buy Christmas presents and like not feel guilty about it, which is something that I've never, ever done before. Um, but once that first deal closed, it was the holidays. And so there wasn't a lot of traction happening. And so I was starting to be like, oh my gosh, that maybe this was a mistake. What if I run out of money? What am I going to do? Like I, I got to pull out my retirement. Like I started kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, but I, 
I knew that there was more time on my hands because I didn't have as many clients as everybody else. I was brand new. So the only thing I could do was just spend some time on the phone. So uh, luckily our team helps with lead generation, which is huge. I think that's super huge in this business. It doesn't matter how nice you are. If you're not getting in front of people, if you're not at bat, you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, slam out of the park. Um, so because they were creating leads for me, I spent two good months where I was on the phone all day. Um, and it wasn't, uh, okay, I'm going to be on the phone for this long today. It was, I'm going to talk to 20 people today. And that takes, that's a lot of people and that's a lot of time. So I knew every single day that I needed to talk to X amount of people in order for those people to eventually come into fruition as far as what those leads were actually going to do. I'm a giant, um, it's math, not magic kind of person. Um, I don't think any lead is a bad lead. I mean, well, <laughs> there are some, <laughs> some people do cuss you out. <laughs> and where do you, where do you think you learned that? Uh, like, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. But That's like, okay. Because I remember we had this conversation and you would like, you were like teaching. I mean, I've learned from making calls like sales too. It's, it's like math, not magic. I, that's, that's, I live and breathe that. Mm -hmm. But like you came to the calls or to the team with like saying, Hey guys, it's just really just at the back into this whole thing. Just like, just got to make this many contacts and this and this and do this and do this and it'll work. Where, where did you learn that? Oh, um, great question. Uh, when I lived in Los Angeles and then for a bit of time when I moved back to Florida, I was a part of the Mary Kay organization. Um, it, it's a wonderful. I still love it. I love the people. I love the women, the leadership, everything it stands for. Uh, and they really did. They spent tons of time pouring into me and they spent tons of time just pouring into their people about your idea of what you think sales is and what creates somebody who's successful. And there's still some really important key phrases that I think all the time. And regardless if you're selling makeup, or if you're selling a house, you know, really sales is sales and you're, you're selling a service, you're selling yourself in a legal way. <laughs> in a legal way. Um, but, but I knew that when I had a lag in actual leads coming in as far as when they were ready. I'm going to buy a house tomorrow. You know, I knew, okay, it's going to be a few months out. I need to start setting up that pipeline. And a lot of what I learned in Mary Kay about not getting discouraged and it's not a, it's not a you problem. It's, it's a numbers thing. You know, those were super important things. And there's still tons of, of phrases that are here that I use constantly. And I attribute that 100% to my my community of my, my Mary cake house. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I, and I think that's the first time I, I really, I know you were a part of Mary Kay and, but that's the first time that I really understood how you put it all together there. And that makes sense. Like, uh, I love that. It's, it's not a, it's not a you problem. It's a numbers problem. Right. I think that yeah, can be like, that's so helpful. Yeah. And, and, it, and that was super good for me to hear. Um, and when I lived in Los Angeles, like I was poor, <laughs> poor, poor, poor. Um, but, you know, working at the church full time was, was fulfilling spiritually, emotionally, but it was not fulfilling my bank account. And, uh, so when I started doing Mary Kay, even on a super small scale, every single month doing a few parties or a few things, hanging out with women and just really just being nice and spending time with people really made it to where I was able to pay my bills, which is like crazy when you think about it. Um, but it really, it really did like set me up for success as far as it's not about, Oh, you're not nice enough or you're not this or you're not that it's, I know what numbers I have to hit every single day in order for those numbers to ha actually happen. Cause everybody you talk to on the phone is, Oh my gosh, yes, I'm going to buy a million dollars worth of stuff. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm going to buy a house tomorrow. And then you meet them tomorrow and they're like, Oh, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. You know? So I knew going into real estate that just because someone says that they're ready doesn't mean that they are. So I need to pretend every single day, oh, they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready. That way, when they actually are, I'm already ahead of it. Super, re I'm super proactive versus reactive. Just, I think that helps in this business in general. I love that. Yeah. Super proactive instead of reactive. I think that's, I think you're hundred percent right. It's, it's, um, it's always better to be ahead of the game instead of like waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, Cool. And then, so, I, I mean, I, th I think, you know, just again, super successful right out, right out the gate. Um, what do you attribute that to also? What is your superpower? I mean, I think <laughs> everybody has a superpower and, and I can kind of 
I think I know it, but um, what do you think yours is, and what how has it helped you um, so far? Um, I want to say my ability to kill houseplants because it doesn't matter, <laughs> <laughs> and romantic relationships. I overwater everything. Um, my superpower, ugh, I don't know. Uh, I would say like my my ability to be incredibly empathetic. Um, I read people really well and I read rooms really well. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm mercurial as, you know, I change based on who I spend time with, but I'm very intuitive and I understand very quickly what someone needs. Like it sounds crazy, but I can walk into a room and like sniff out what someone needs, whether just despite what kind of need it is, like that's something that I'm very in tuned to. And I think that really bodes well for people who are, wanting to purchase something, you know, whether that's a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars. Um, I think people pick up really easily that I really do want to help and that my, my heart yearns to keep people happy. And I think that that's a part of my natural personality or like my, if that was a superpower. <laughs> um, I think that really helps in this business because there are a lot of people just in general in the world. We don't live in a world where people like are excited to be around other people. And we don't live in a world where people want to genuinely be compassionate and I think that people pick up on that pretty quickly that that really is my heart and that really is who I am you know I, I just went to a, a seminar this past week and I was telling you about it yesterday on our sales call and and I was having a conversation with someone and they said like really the most important part and I think this you, you really embody this really well is is really to contribute and to serve mm -hmm. and I think you if we put that first of like to contribute and to serve and people can feel that I think everything else just falls into place, right? They just naturally kind of want to work with us. And if we come from a place of contribution and service, um, again, obviously it has to be a fair transaction where one person is not taking advantage of the other. And that's why we ask those questions and that's why we pre-qualify pre and that sort of thing. And we've always worked on, but I think that's really important. I think that's what you're saying too, is just like, like people feel that from you. And I, and I agree. And I think, also, why why that came up for me is because I remember, like, when we're going through, like, well, how is Sarah successful here? Why is she successful? And we were, like, unpacking all that as a team, like, for everybody, because that's what we do. Like, we share every what's working, what's not working. Um, it was, like, those little things along the way to make someone feel special, like sending out mm -hmm. a, a card, connecting with them, sending out a text, like, those little things. And, like, we're, we're always, you're always getting reviews back. Like before the transaction was even closed, we were like, how are you doing that? Like, they haven't even She's bought a house amazing. Yet. It's like, right? we haven't even done anything and yet. <laughs> we haven't even done anything yet. And so, um, I don't know. So I think, I know that it's from the outside looking in. And if I can even make a uh, an observation, I think it is that. I think it's those little things because you're thinking always about how to contribute and, to, and serve somebody. And people ultimately just naturally understand that and they can, they, they just feel that. So that's so cool. Um, um, why do you think, I guess we talked about why in the beginning of this conversation, like what is our why? Like um, I know real estate's difficult. I know it's like every day people today, wow, like these, look at these people they are, they're making all this money and they're doing fantastic. And look at that commission that I'm paying. But, um, but I know it, I do it every day. You do it as well. It's, it's, it's not always easy, but why do you keep getting up every day going forward, you know, always trying to get better, trying to do more transactions, trying to help more people, trying to serve more people, trying to contribute more. Like why, like, why are you doing this? Like when you could be doing something else? Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes I ask that, like, why am I doing this? I um, ask it every day. <laughs> But um, I always come back to this is for the first time ever, I've had a job where I really can set my schedule, which is wonderful. I homeschool my kid full time. Fifth grade is not easy to homeschool, by the way. If you're listening, don't do it. Send him to school. But <laughs> don't tell my kid. Um, but I love that, you know, there's, there's parts of it that I wasn't expecting to really, really enjoy so much and being able to set my schedule as a giant one. Um, and then really being able to have tons of quality time with my kid, because I know that if I plan my, if I work my plan or plan my work and work my plan, I know that it's going to be incredibly beneficial. 
Um, but my, my big like umbrella why is really, I mean, it's, I'm a single parent. So if I'm not on that phone, if I'm not showing houses, me and my kid are homeless, you know, uh, we don't, there's no help. Like everything, I'm the mommy, I'm the daddy, I'm all of it. And so it really comes down to, I want to be able to provide a formidable future for my daughter. Whereas before it was, I'm making enough money for us to live day to day. Now I my focus has shifted to, I want to be able to make enough money for her to have something when I die, which is like morbid and weird. Cause I never, ever thought that way. I was like, well, she's 18. She'll figure it out herself. <laughs> but, um, but now I'm in a place where, you know, our basic needs that are happening right now, like day-to-day -day needs taken care of those. I don't have to stress about like I used to. Um, and now it's becoming, a formidable future for my daughter. And, uh, yeah, like we want to like fun things. We want to go on vacation to Europe cause she's obsessed with France. She did a project in first grade and she still talks about France. So like, that's like a big thing. I never, ever in a million years thought like, Oh, I'm going to be able to have enough money to take my kid and she and I can go do that. But that's what we're working on. Um, like, you know, fun things, new, a, a new car, a better house, all those things are wonderful. Um, but really it comes down to, I, don't want my time to be poured into being stressed about taking care of her basic needs. I want my time being poured into her becoming an incredible human and changing the world as she gets older. That's what it's about. That's the long answer. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's so awesome. And you know, I love that. It's like, it's like, and as you start getting those basic needs met and like taken care of, now you start thinking about legacy and all of that stuff and growth and expansion. And we can kind of, we can move in that direction. It, it frees us up to start thinking about those things. And we were talking about before we started this call about drag, like we have drag if we can't, you know, feed ourselves or we don't have a place to stay or we right. can't, we don't have like transportation and like those, those necessities like health, transportation, food, um, all those things, insurance. That um, and then once we once we have those taken care of, we can start thinking about bigger things. How to save for the future, how to buy different different things to to give us residual. How to work on residuals. I know we're part of EXP and and residuals. We can you know create residuals for the future for our, for our legacy. So um, that's cool. I, I love that. I love that. And then I was actually was one of my questions. I mean, how has your goals changed from when you started? And I understand what they probably were when you started to where they are now. Like, what are your goals now? What do you, what do you, how do you see your, like, your, like one year, three year, five year goal? Um, it's funny. Cause when I first started, like my goals were basic needs, things you want to be able to do, things you've never been able to do before. And I really, in my brain, when I was setting them, like they were like really in my brain, they were like, oh, this will never happen. But, you know, shoot for the moon. You might land amongst the stars. You know, that's kind of like what I thought. Um, and, I'm, and I've always done them all, so that's awesome, um, which is like super cool to say. Uh, but, you know, when I created those goals in my brain, they were like lofty, like, wow, if you even come close to any of these, like be really proud of yourself, Sarah. Uh, and they were have uh, a, a new a new place for my for my daughter and I and it, in my brain I was like even a one bedroom apartment with you know an electric stove on the patio like in my brain like I was really like limiting myself into what I really thought I like I was capable of um, and so I really had to kind of tweak and like have more of a, a mindset of abundance like no like these things are available you just have to work for them and it wasn't that I wasn't working before I was just working harder not smarter and so my goals went from these are lofty goals to these are your basic needs like you want to make sure that those things are met and that you're providing them 100% by yourself for you and for your kid and then they've they've now those have, have been done so like, okay take them off the list and now it's like they're kind of morphing into like I said before, a formidable future with some like fun stuff on the side, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and as like those things actually happen, mm -hmm. like I'm a checker. Like if I check something off a list, the endorphins in my brain are like, yes, like it's, it's like science, like super nerdy side note, super nerdy. Yeah. Um, and so if I like write something on a list and I check it off, I feel like, Oh, awesome. 
awesome, awesome, awesome. And the other day I was like, I need to make a new goal poster because I started ripping everything off. Like there's nothing on a goal poster. It's so Which cool. in my brain, when my brain, it was like, okay, this, I said this was a one year plan, but really it was like, this is probably going to take three to five years. And so really all my one year stuff that in my brain was actually going to be three to five out. Um, I was able to do within a year, which is really exciting and super humbling. And, um, so now it's kind of like, okay, now you know how to set a, a realistic goal. Now I'm actually going to set a lofty goal. That's like really actually lofty because I really might actually <laughs> hit just below it <laughs> before it was lofty, but really it was super attainable. Um, but as far as like three, three to five years, I don't even know. I don't even know what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that, I mean, it's all this to like you, who you are, your person. It's just, I think we just found that like the right vehicle and like, you just like jumped in the car and like you said, sales is sales. Like it's, we're selling, like I sold natural food bars before this for the company. You sold Mary Kay beauty products. Like now we're selling homes. Right. right. And so at the end of the day, the, the fundamentals are the fundamentals and, and we're just, and you, we touched on them. Like how do we serve and contribute? it's it's not magic it's numbers like these are like these are like fundamental truths of what sales are right and then we just work harder um and and smarter and we we can hit those and I mean, over time we get better and then i think it's also important um you know i think putting ourselves around it around like-minded people is important also like people that are doing more than us and are have like bigger thoughts or bigger um ideas mm -hmm. um and then i i always for me is is always like well if they can do it i can do it yeah right i think like successful people like think like that i, I mean if they can do like wow if he can do it i can do it you know um and it's true it's definitely true for sure yeah um there's a i think it's in psalms but the bible talks about like spending time with people that are elevated um, and so like in the idea that iron sharpens iron, like if you are an iron rod, you're not going to sharpen yourself on a blade of grass. Like that's why it's your time. You're trying to get sharp. You got to sharpen it against iron. And so spending time with people that are elevated, uh, I think makes a, a, a huge difference. Not to say like, Oh, you always, you know, you, you, like not saying you want to hang out with people that are below you or above you. But you know, if you want to, do, here's here's what I heard someone say to me one time. Don't ever take advice for somebody from someone you wouldn't trade places with. So if you and that's you know totally outside looking in, but I'm not going to spend time with somebody that doesn't have their ish together and then take their advice because they don't know what they're doing. And so I spend time with people, you know, like I spend time with you guys. <laughs> I trade I trade with y'all any day, you know. And so. Like the idea that it's okay to want to be elevated and still at the same time be humble. And I think that that's something that has been a, a big lens shift for me. Uh, like, cause you know, the Bible is very clear about, you know, take care of others and pour into others and it's okay to, and that's a huge part of who I am, but it's also okay to be that person to somebody else. And so, and I think that's a big part of my being able to be successful is that, you know, for the last year, people that were way elevated and above me have been pouring into me. And now in that same way, I'm able to do that for other people, whether that's with real estate or a mom's group or whatever, you know, it's being able to understand that it's okay to be poured into because you can't pour into somebody else's cup if your cup is empty. And I think I've been running on an empty cup for a really long time as far as the life that I knew that I was born to live. And so it's, it's nice than the last year that I've been poured into. So now my cup is full. So now I have the opportunity to pour into others. It's awesome. That's so cool. Um, so uh, last question I have for you is like when you started into real estate, we're talking about like limited beliefs a lot and like beliefs now of like, um, affordable future use like words like that. I love it. Um, but like when you started getting into real estate, what do you wish that you knew then that you know now about the trade about the about whatever we're doing um that you you think would have been helpful for you like say someone getting started or um something that helped you be successful or what do you think you're i mean i also could be like a perception of it than it is now like but just something that you could share um 
I think if I would have known, and people told me, I was just like, no, they just, they just never met me. They don't understand. Um, people told me, and listen when I tell you, not everybody tells you the truth. <laughs> That's also why I'm just like, someone's like, oh, real estate's just like dating. I was like, no, it's not, because I'm a great real estate agent. It does not convert well for dating. <laughs> not at all. But I really do. Um, it's really hard for me to not believe somebody like I'm super trusting like super Pollyanna I'm like oh my gosh that sounds great I believe you and they're like ah, stupid uh, so I really wish that when I started I really wish I would have really listened and understood that just because someone says oh no I'm, I'm definitely gonna buy this house I want you to drop what you're doing drop everything and meet me in Miami when I don't live anywhere near Miami I mean I didn't drive all the way to Miami I almost did but there was several times when I spent precious resources. I spent my time. I spent my own gas money. I spent mileage on my car. And not to mention, I could have been using that time on the road because I didn't live close. I was driving three hours a day. Um, I could have used that time pouring into my kid or being on the phone talking to actual people that were actually ready. And so I, I wish I would have figured it out within like a few hours versus a month or two in, like, oh, it's okay to tell somebody no and uh, really spending time with people who were elevated and people really pouring into me and like me really understanding like, okay, just because you're nice doesn't mean people are gonna buy a house. Like I needed, I really needed a breakdown and I needed a list of if people say these things, they're not going to buy a house right away. And so understanding and really like figuring out those processes and that's something that's super important. Uh, I think a lot of people jump into any type of career where it's sales and it's commission based you know a lot of people jump right in and then they're like well i'll figure it out and you know there's a part of that you you want that you want that that grit but um you have to have processes in place and if you tell say yes to everybody then you're saying no to yourself and i wish that i would have understood that earlier because i probably would have wasted so much time driving and then driving home crying, disappointed because they didn't really like the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we, we've talked about this too, and you helped clarify this for me. It's like, we have to move towards conflict. Like, and sometimes in those questions that we don't wanna ask, like now will help us then deal with something in the future when we pour all our time into it and we wasted all of our time with that person who doesn't wanna buy, right? But we called it, it's like conflict resolution. I was like, oh, we gotta move towards conflict. And you're like, no, it's, we're resolving conflict. Yeah, I'm like, um, let's call it something else. <laughs> but I think you're right. It's like resolving, like we're resolving the conflict right there. We're like, uh, with the uh, those questions that we ask to understand, like if something, if they're actually going to buy a house, if they want to, um, and so we're understanding what their goals and wants and needs are. So when we go out there, we're like, oh, so you don't want to buy a house? Oh. Okay, got it. I should have asked that question before, right? So, um, cool. Yeah, I think that's probably mine too. I think I would just wished I it was an easier way to learn it, where we had like just a like a process where we 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 have process, but just we we just knew like this is a someone who doesn't want to buy. This is someone who doesn't want to sell. And sometimes, right? Like some people don't even know it themselves. Like you have to ask them the question. They don't even understand it themselves that they don't want to buy or right. sell, but like, or they, they want to sell, but they're really not a seller or they want, they want to buy, but they're really not a buyer. They're a seller, right? They just don't know the process. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's really helpful. That's really helpful. So Sarah, if someone was going to like find you on the internet to wanting to work with you as, as a buyer, um, or a seller. Um, I mean, where would they find you? Um, Instagram? Is it Facebook? <laughs> Do they email you? Call you? Yeah. <laughs> you can you can send me a fax because it's 1992. Um, <laughs> uh, you can call me or text me on my cell phone. Uh, Do you want me to say my cell phone number? Sure. If if you feel comfortable don't be with it. Anybody yeah. Call me or text me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can call me or text me. That's the most uh, expedited way to get a hold of me. Uh, my cell phone number is 661-312-6318. You can also visit our Carol Team website. It's letsellflorida.com. And then if you go to, uh, I think it's the team, you click on the team link, and then you can do-do-do-do-do, and then you find my face. I think I'm like this. 
in the picture. Um, you just find Sarah and you just click on that. Uh, and that also gives you a great way to sign up for a website. It's a free website. Uh, and it gives you listings based on what your search criteria is. So it's super helpful. So that's probably going to be the best one for you. So once again, that website's letsellflorida.com. And then you can also Google me, Google Sarah Bolin, Vero Beach Realtor. I pop up. And then um, you can also find me on Facebook. It's Sarah BB, B E B E. Or you can type in my phone number and my full name and I'll Perfect. pop up that way too. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing um, everything. Um, and uh, everybody, thank you for joining us as well. Hopefully you found this valuable. Um, feel, please join us again. Um, we'll be posting these every few weeks, um, getting started and um, bringing you content like this. And I'm sure we'll have Sarah back on as well. Um, and uh, thank you so much and talk to you soon. Bye.